Don't just buy a new video game, make one. Alright, hello there, this is Gareth Davies, and today I'm going to be showing you a game called Judgment Day, which is a game I made um, using the Unity engine. Don't just download the latest app, help design it. And basically it's a game for um, an assignment that I was set during Professional Practice Week 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sh guide you through how the game works and also like the difficulty settings and just generally how the game like works and stuff, yeah, so uh, we've got the play button, the options button and the quit button. And if we click on options, you'll see there's options to change the volume, like so. And then we've got the show tutorial button, which actually enables or disables the tutorial screen. So for now, I think we're just going to tick that to demonstrate how the game works. And we're going to click play. And the first difficulty is called normal, so I'm going to be showing you the normal difficulty. Don't just play on your phone, program it. It's going to take a second, and there we go, the scene is loaded. So in normal mode, you must save the City of Thunderland uh, by obtaining as many votes as possible before the time runs out. Uh, to get votes, you need to send voters to one of the voting booths. Um, each, time you will, each time you get votes, your score will be increased by 10 points. And the way that you tell um, voters to go to the voting booths is you you uh, press the left or right arrow key or AOD. So basically uh, the idea is that the players go in a straight line over the decision box and they go from the bottom door to the top door in a straight direction. So when they pass over that, um, that box with the two colours, the light blue and the light pink, that's where you get to control the position. So you get to control which direction they move in, which is left or right. Okay, so um, so if, if a voter make, makes it to the voting booth, you will be awarded 10 points. And if a criminal makes it to the voting booth, you will be reducted of minus 10 points. And if the voters reach the exit, you will lose minus 10 points. And if criminals reach the exit, you will gain plus 10 points. If one of the guards catches the criminal, you will gain um, another 100 points, which is a good thing. Um, if a criminal reaches one of the bo um, booths, you lose a life, and if, if you run out of lives as well, it's game over. So, and another thing to mention is that the game runs from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m., and that's not actually real world like time, like not not really like like you know like an actual clock in real life, but it's just the game time. So, it's um, sped up so that it, the game runs faster. So. I think on average it's about like a minute worth of gameplay for each different difficulty. The game stops at 10pm and says game over, because that's when the elections are being counted and the game is over. So enough um, talking about that, let's just get started. Okay, and as you can see, we've got our first um, voter right here, well criminal right here. And if you didn't see before, the criminals are the red guys and the voters are the yellow guys. So the idea of this uh, difficulty mode is to try and assign voters to booths, as you can see. And as you can see there, the, the voters don't actually collide with the guards, it's only the criminals that collide with the guards. And that's for like, you know, an obvious reason, because you don't want criminals getting into your voting booth, you just want normal people. <laughs> so, yeah. And that could be a, that can be a good and bad thing, it could be a good thing if, in this difficulty for example, you want to stop um, enemies from getting across. It actually it gives you points if the guards catch the criminals, but then, as I'm going to show you later on, if the guards catch the criminals, it's actually a bad thing because that's not the point of the game mode. I'll explain later, but here we go. So as you as you just saw there, I ran out of lives, and it's come up with the game over screen. So if we click back to main menu, it takes me back to the main menu, and so that's the normal difficulty. And as you can see, there's a little bit of a bug because the uh, the guy is kind of like just standing still and he's not moving as before he was moving because he was animated. I think it's because the time scale is being set to zero, which is pause the game. But um, I wasn't managed I wasn't able to fix that unfortunately, but it doesn't matter because it still works. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go into easy mode. Alright, so easy mode or also known as to 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 totalitarian mode, I think I think that's how you pronounce it. So this mode's a little bit different to the normal mode and um, Basically, the points are swapped around. So, before you know how you got, um, you would get plus ten points for a voter. Well, in this game mode, you get 
minus 10 points for voter and you get plus 10 points for criminal. So you actually get points for letting criminals destroy the voting booths, which is a good thing. So this is actually the first game mode reversed, in a sense. So, the city is run by a harsh dictator, Kim Jong-un, lol. <laughs> uh, corrupt votes become valid votes for the dictator, which reduces the number of votes for all of the political parties. Um, in order to help the di dictator, you need to send criminals to the voting booths to damage them. And damage is done to the booths, and any damage that's done to the booth will increase your points by 10. And as mentioned before, the, the decision box, so you can control if you want the character to go left or right. That's using the input.getKey method in one of these scripts for this. And the way the uh, decision box works is uh, quite interesting actually because I managed to make it so that these, these individual squares are actually two different colliders. So um, the idea is that when a player gets in the center of either of these, if the user presses left, it'll actually it'll change the rotation of the player to move in the um, left direction which is like minus 90 I think on the Y coordinate in rotation so once a player presses a key and the, the player starts to move in the other direction you can't actually then change your mind and change the, the guy's direction to the other direction if that makes sense so if you press left you can't then press right to get the, uh, the guy to go the other way because you, by then he's already left the other collision box which detects the other key So hope that made sense but it's all very complicated stuff trust me <laughs> so as you can see uh, criminals are the red guys uh, the voters are the yellow guys and if the criminals make it to the voting booth you'll be awarded 10 points and if the voters make it to the voting booth you will be reducted minus 10 points if the criminals reach the exit you will lose 10 points and if voters reach the exit you will gain 10 points also um, as I mentioned before um, about the fact that if the criminals get to the guards, that was a bad thing. It is a bad thing in this game mode because now if the guards catch the criminals, you will actually lose 100 points rather than gain them. So you don't want to let the guards catch you this time. So that's a bit different. Uh, the dictator was also ordered you to sabotage 12 votes. So this means you send a total of 12 criminals to win the game. So this means basically you've got to destroy the voting booths 12 times. And um, it doesn't matter which one you destroy, you can destroy this one or that one. Um, as long as you destroy either of the voting booths 12 times, you win the game. So, there we go. And as, and as before, the time runs from 7am to 10pm. Okay, so we're going to start it right now. And as you can see, it's exactly the same as before, but the game mode has been changed uh, significantly. So now that, if we put a vote a criminal in there, as you saw, we got 10 points. And if a, if a voter gets in there, that's a bad thing, because we want to try and corrupt the elections as much as possible with criminals. <laughs> so, uh, as you can see, I'm just assigning people. Criminal captured. See, it's a bad thing. And you know it's a bad thing, because explosions are playing. <laughs> you want to get the hallelujah sound, because that means you're doing something right, obviously. <laughs> so, as, as, as I said, there is a... Well, I didn't say, but there is a bit of a challenge element to this because obviously the time's going. So you want to try and get as many criminals in the voting booths as possible before the time runs out. And that's quite hard because the guards are stopping you from being able to do that. As you saw, yeah, guard captured. Criminal captured, sorry. To be honest, like, I think I could have done more with the guards, but I didn't really know what else to do with them, so I just kind of left them like that. Right, I need to try and get... I want to demonstrate what happens if you win the game and what happens if you get if you run out of time. So I'm going to try and win the game this time and see if I can do it. So here we go. I think it's going to come up soon. There we go. And as you can see, it says congratulations, you have won. So that's that's because we've run out of um, votes, so like we've destroyed it 12 times, which is what you're supposed to do. So you've won, you've won this game mode, so return to main menu. Oh, yeah. Right, okay, so the next game mode I'm going to show you is the medium mode. So as you can see, when I click medium, I'm going to load into here. So now there's a, there's a difference because we've got a third um, voter booth. So basically, um, only through revolution can the city be reformed, so you'll need so you'll find an additional voting booth for the third political candidate, uh, which you'll need to control. 
And to get votes, you need to send voters to one of the voting booths. So this is this game mode is essentially the same as the first one, normal mode. It's just that the fact that you've got an additional voting booth. So I'm going to skip past this tutorial because it's not necessary. So as you remember, as you remember before in the first game mode, um, if a voter makes it to the voting booth, they get awarded 10 points. If a criminal gets to one, it minuses 10 points. And then if a guard catches a criminal, it's a plus 100 points. And if a criminal reaches one of the booths, you lose a life. And if you run out of lives, it's game over. Because um, before, I don't know if I mentioned this, but in the easy difficulty, the live system is actually disabled. And in all of the other game modes, the lives is enabled. I just thought because um, I, it didn't make sense for me to have the life system in the second game mode because you could win. And it, it didn't really work very well, so I decided to disable the life system in the second game mode, but enable it for everything else. So, as, so um, also similarly as before, it, the game runs from 7am to 10pm in game. And once it reaches 10pm, then, you know, it's gonna say game over. So, let's start. So, it's a little bit difficult now, now the fact that we've got another voting booth at the very bottom of the map. So the idea is, we need to get as many votes as possible. And this, this is a little bit diffi more difficult because the time scale is actually a little bit faster. No, sorry, that's wrong, that's not correct. It's actually the next game mode that has that. <laughs> so, as you can see, we ran out of lives because we had five lives and all of the criminals hit um, the voting booths. So, we ran out of lives, unfortunately. So, what I'm going to show you now is I'm going to show you the hard difficulty. So, this one's a bit more interesting because it actually sets the speed at which the game plays. So, this is actually quite hard. Okay, so this is... Uh, hard difficulty, also known as martial law mode, and you must save the city of Fundland by obtaining as many votes as possible before the time runs out. To get votes, you need to send voters to one of the voting booths. Yeah, and it's essentially the same um, rules as the first one, except we've got obviously the third voting booth. So let's give it a try. So immediately, as you just saw there, the game was at normal speed, but then it got faster. So it's a lot more difficult now to control so you've got to try and get the criminals to hit the guards in order to avoid losing a life ah but you see I died so oh well so there you go I, d I died on that difficulty okay so the last game mode I'm going to show you is the insane game mode which is like very very difficult and the reason why is because the time scale now is actually double what it was in hard so it's much like it's really fast it's impossible to control, so so as you see, once I loaded, right. So in rush hour, it's basically the same as um, the previous one. It's the same as hard, but obviously it's much faster. So let's just get started and just ignore this tutorial screen. So here we go. As you can see, they're going very, they're moving incredibly fast now. Yep, yeah, and I died. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how this game works, and. For a final thing, I'm just going to show you um, that the show tutorial button works as well. So if we untick this and then we play a game, you'll see that the tutorial screen is, in, um, now, is now disabled. So if I go on insane mode, as you see, the game starts immediately. And I'm going to die again, I think. <laughs> yep, I died. <laughs> so that's going to be it for me. Um, thanks very much for watching. And... Um, Yep, I'm going to show you that the quit button works now by leaving you, so goodbye. No one's born a computer scientist, but with a little hard work and some math and science, just about anyone can become one. This week is your chance to give it a shot. And don't let anyone tell you you can't.